So now I have the vector equation of a circle. And I can combine that. Like if you want to find points of intersection, P and Q, right? I've got a vector equation of a circle here and a vector equation of a line here. How do we normally find points of intersection? We solve simultaneously, right? What am I going to do here? I've got a V here. I've got a V here. Seems like the most straightforward thing to do is it's just a straight substitution in there, yeah? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to write down, like it's always clear, it's good, good to be clear and say what I'm doing here, right? Um, to find points of intersection, which in this case are P and Q. I'm going to solve simultaneously. Might write, substitute. All right, what do we have here? So uh, here's the equation of, or the vector equation, I should say, of my straight line. And then that's my V. And then here comes this offset that comes from the fact that my circle isn't centered on the origin. It's somewhere else, right? So I'm going to write 1, negative 2, like so. Is that all right? It's rapidly getting more complicated, but I can actually start to simplify some of this stuff once I finish writing the equation, right? What's that equal to again? 3. 3, cool. OK, um, I've got a string of vectors along here, but this is just going all the way back to like extension 1 vectors. It's even 2D, right? I know this pesky lambda is flying around, but we can deal with that, right? We can say, for instance, <clears throat> what do we got here? Uh, I can say this is 2 plus lambda minus 1. Do you see me comparing all the x components up the top there? Is that all right? I know it's a bit sneaky of me that I sort of expanded this lambda in at the same time, but I reckon we can handle that. What am I going to get from my y component? 1. 2 lambda is what I get from this middle vector. And then, watch that sign, plus 2. Is that OK? How's that? Uh, that's equal to 3. All right, let's keep going. I can tidy this up a little bit. I can collect some like terms. Uh, 2 minus 1. I know it's the end of the day. You talk, we can get there. It's 1. 1 plus lambda. Uh, what am I getting from my y component? 3 plus 2 lambda. Thank you. 3 plus 2 lambda. When I go to the distance to that vector, it should equal 3. Right? OK, now just pause for a moment. Uh, you know, you kind of write something down, and you go into simplifying mode, and then you get to the end of simplifying, and you have to make a choice. Where do I go from here? Right? What am I trying to find again? M. In the end, I'm going to find M. But sort of the way I'm getting there is via P and Q, because M is the midpoint of P and Q. So there's a lambda, a particular parameter, that'll give me, whoops, that'll give me P over there. And there's a particular lambda, a different one, that'll give me Q. Does that make sense? Xiao, does this answer your question now? Uh, yeah. Does it, does it matter which one's P and which one's Q? No, it doesn't, especially because I'm after just the midpoint, which is between them anyway. Okay? So therefore, I need to find out what the appropriate lambdas are. So I kind of need to get out of this weird looking equation into something I can solve for lambda. Okay? Now, the big tip here, maybe you want to write this off to the side because it's not a specific thing to this question. It's just useful all the time. What we're going to do is use vector distances or vector magnitudes, right? So over here, if you want to write down, right? Vector distances. They just come from Pythagoras, right? If you've got some vector, say, like this, and we'll call it P, Q, right, like so. And I wanted to know what the length of that vector was. In, order, in other words, this. Right? If I want to know the magnitude of it. Um, I just need to form the right angle triangle that it lives in because I can know what P and Q are. What are P and Q in this particular triangle? P would be the horizontal component, so it's this. It's this bottom line here, and then Q's the vertical component, so it's this guy, right? Now, how can I use that to help me over here? This is my horizontal component. This is my vertical component. What's this? It's the hypotenuse. So I've got Pythagoras coming out of this, right? We can do this. Where'd my black marker go? Uh, here we go. What am I going to get? Let's see. 1 plus lambda squared. There's my A squared. 3 plus 2 lambda squared. There's my b squared, and then here comes the hypotenuse squared. You following so far? OK, now at this point, we have taken a question that was decidedly unfamiliar, and we've converted it over into something much better. We are on the home stretch here, OK? But just before, I reckon you could sort of go and do this on your own, but just before I let you off, just to make it easier for you, right? If you solve this for lambda, what would you get? You get two values. Of course there should be two values. Why are there two values? Two points, one for p. 
one for q, right? Now, I can go and find those, right, and then get where m is, right? But do I really need to? Is there a quicker way that can get me straight to where I want to go, which is m? Say that again. Uh -huh. Very good. OK, so just think about what's going on here, right? When we solve this, this is just a quadratic in lambda, right? When you find your two solutions for lambda, your midpoint's going to be where in relation to those two lambdas? It'll be right in the middle. In other words, it'll be on the axis of symmetry. That's what we would say, right? So let's go ahead and just kind of unpack what's going on here. What have I got? 1 plus 2, oops, 2 lambda plus lambda squared. What's over here? 9 plus 12 lambda plus 4 lambda squared equals 9. Cancel, cancel. What have I got here? Um, let's get this in a reasonable order, shall we? 5 lambda squared. What's my lambda term? 14 lambda. What's my constant? Just the 1. So what I've got here, this quadratic, right? I've got an A, I've got a B, I've got a C. How do we get an axis of symmetry out of an A, a B, and a C? Think, think. An axis of symmetry on a quadratic. Isn't it going to be? Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Uh, negative B of 2A. Negative B on 2a. Pahan was mentioning in the quadratic formula, right? You've got minus b and then plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, right? Well, one of them will be plus the square root of the discriminant and the other one will be minus. So we don't need to worry about that. You average them out, they disappear. That's what gives you minus b on 2a. Did I get it? Yeah? Uh, cancel, cancel, that looks like so. I got a lambda. Lambda of what? This is the lambda of m, right? Now, remember, lambda came from, have a look right back at the start of our question. Lambda came from which equation? Have a look. The equation of the line, right? So therefore, I should take that lambda and I should put it back where? In the equation of the line. I mean, thankfully, there's kind of not many other alternatives, but maybe you, you're like, I don't know, maybe here. Well, you just get 3 equals 3, because that was you know, not helpful. So here, actually, I'll take it back. You will not get 3 equals 3, because this is solving for p and q, whereas we've found the midpoint of p and q. Okay? Let's go ahead, put it back into the original line. Substitute lambda into line equation. Don't say you're substituting it into v, because there's a couple of v's flying around. right? It's this particular v. Uh, what am I going to get here? This v equals 2, 1, plus. What is it? 1, 2. Okay. Now at this point, there's some arithmetic. Uh, I might as well do this longhand whilst you're all working. I'm going to turn this first one into fifths, because I see I've got fifths over here as well. So 2 is 10 fifths. 1 is 5 fifths. Here's my first vector. What am I getting on the right-hand side? Minus, have a look at the x's. Help me out. 7 fifths, because it's just a 1. And then minus 14 fifths, if I've got that right. What do you think? Sorry, I'm a bit low on the board. So it looks to me like I get an x component and a y component. What's the x component? Have a look. 3 over 5? Just before you go on, does it look like 3 over 5? Even if you don't have like a perfectly accurate diagram like I have, at least you're in the ballpark, right? And then I've got a, a y-coordinate rather of negative 9 over 5, which is close to negative 2. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with that. Thumbs up. Okay. 